Hello everyone, you welcome to this edition of the Inside on Equinox Television. I am Babla Jonathan. The two Anglophone regions of Cameroon, the Northwest and Southwest regions, have been in an unstable, tense and uncertain socio-political atmosphere for more than a year today. What is referred to as the Anglophone crisis has speedily moved from a peaceful protest by teachers and lawyers to violent and even deadly confrontations between civilians and elements of the National Armed Forces. Many elements of the National Armed Forces and civilians in their thousands have died in the different incidents in the northwest and southwest regions of the country and many inhabitants of the two regions particularly in the southwest region in some of the villages close to the border with neighboring nigeria fled their homes and many continue fleeing their homes to seek refuge in president buhari's country and it is within this context that elections the presidential senatorial legislative and municipal elections are expected to be organized in the country this year and the president of the republic paul b indicated in his end of year address to the nation uh, that this is an electoral year 2018 is an electoral year discover a guess in some few seconds a guess in this edition of the program is the national chairman of the main opposition political party in the Republic of Cameroon, the Social Democratic Front, John Fundy. Chairman, you welcome to the program. Well, thank you. Mr. Chairman, government has continued to maintain that the situation in the two Anglophone regions of Cameroon, the Northwest and the Southwest regions is gradually returning to normalcy. But you, as the main opposition uh, political leader in Cameroon, who has eyes across the country and, of course, in the two Anglophone regions, what evaluation can you make of the situation on the ground? The situation is deepening. There are still many more people being killed. There are still many more villages being burnt. There are still, there's still quite a lot of destruction. There's disaster. So the people who are saying that... Uh, the situation is coming to normalcy. I don't know from what angle they are viewing the situation. For instance, sitting looking at you in the camera, I cannot see your own camera. And what you see, what the viewers will sing about you, is what they will say. But I think that the uh, president of the country has not gone down to the field has not sent people to the field, or maybe he sends them and they don't tell him the truth. He's not being told the truth. And more so, before he declared this war, he declared the war at the airport, and he had not spoken to anybody. I remember that when uh, Cameroon won this African Cup in Gabon, and they invited me to a 2D for the, uh, for the cup to be shown to the president, I went and I helped Mr. Beer's son and dragged him and said, please, Mr. Beer, I'm telling you that you are not taking this thing seriously. You are taking it lightly. You think that it's a student, lawyer's issue that you will tell them, please do this or do that. And I thanked him for having sent his prime minister to come listen to the lawyers and the teachers. And in actual fact, between uh, the prime minister, the lawyers and the teachers, they actually agreed on certain uh, projected facts that were supposed to be implemented by the head of state. So I told Mr. Beer that if you can implement this, tell the, for the children to go to school, for the lawyers to go back to work, that was going to solve the problem almost immediately. But his incest, the insert said they should arrest the teachers, they should arrest the lawyers, and they put everybody on the run. People panicked and they started running. Children were not going to school and up to today, most of the schools in the north, southwest are not uh, functional. Mr. President, you said the President of the Republic, Paul Beer, declared war on those who are referred today as secessionists on the 31st of December in his end of year address to the nation. But many government members have denied this and even political scientists like Professor Elvis Singolengole saying that the President of the Republic never used these words, declaring war. Then what are the soldiers doing from the air, from the ground, the build, and they're shooting and killing? What is that? What has he said about this? 
uh, the people down Mamfi now, Kwakwa villages, Ebongje, Ebonge, and all those areas, are they elephants and uh, um, antelopes that they are shooting and killing in the forest? They burned the whole of Kwakwa village, which your television went filmed and showed the world. Is it Frundi who burned that? Has Mr. Bia asked what is happening there? When one soldier dies, he condemns and he gets very angry. I get angry myself, but he should also. He's never condemned a child or a civilian that is killed. The uniform that the soldiers wear is the tax money we pay for them to protect us. But when they now turn to kill, and some of these children who are running through the bushes now have been pushed to that extent, because up to now, I'm happy you are a journalist and at your vantage position. Maybe Mr. B has addressed the nation on this. He has talked to Anglophones on this. But this is something at my own backside. He's never spoken to me to say, what do you think about this? What can we do about this? In other countries where you have opposition, which is a position I've been pushed into to accept, I accept it in the interest of the people. But now, I think that the government and the opposition, they talk. They look for common grounds to resolve issues that affect the country. When you start shooting and killing from the air, you open an arsenal war on your own people and you put the people on the run. When a child, you beat a child, and that child is running, the child can say anything, can make any statement. And when he makes a statement because he's under stress, you can never judge him on that statement. But this is what is happening in Cameroon, that we now have secessionists, we now have rebels, we now have this, we use all the uh, terminology to describe the Anglophone, which is what I object to. Mr. Chairman, you're talking about soldiers shooting on uh, civilians, firing bullets and killing uh, civilians. But we know that uh, in recent times there have been serious gun battles. Not only the soldiers shooting, but also those who are referred to as secessionist fighters shooting with heavy arms on the other side. No, so in Kambu, I said in the, 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 the type of people you are calling as secessionists, I say that they've been pushed to that extent. And if you listen carefully to what I said before, I said when you punish a child too harsh and too hard, that child can make any statement, that child will use anything to defend himself. Even this morning I was giving my son an analogy that if you go somewhere, beat a dog very well, the dog cries and runs, takes note of you. Even if you are coming in a crowd of people, about five of you are coming, when that dog sees your face, he'll back and run away from you or, or charge at you. So, when you inflict pain on a person, the person can use any language. As I said before, I condemn the killing of soldiers as I condemn in very strong terms the killing of armless citizens. Now in Kwakwa village, they said they roasted, burnt to ashes an old woman in the house. What did that poor old woman, what did she do? Can she take a glass like this to throw at a soldier? That the, the soldiers that burn such people to death, they forget that they also have grandparents back home. Unfortunately for me, all my own grandparents are gone, but I respect a grandmother anywhere in this country, either in the east, in the north, in the southwest, northwest, southwest. I respect these grandparents because these are the people that brought us up to where we are today. Is Mr. Chairman talking about using the anecdote that he used a few seconds ago, a child responding to um, maybe harsh correction from the, from the parents. This is spontaneous, but what we are observing in the southwest region of the country today is not like a, a spontaneous response to uh, repression from the elements of the National Armed Forces. It, it, it looks like a well-organized something no, with heavy arms. Some even refer to it as, uh, qualify it as uh, terrorists synonymous to what Boko Haram is doing in the far north. Yeah, Mr. Journalist, you'll understand that this fight in the north southwest has taken more than a year. And when you push people, you are killing people in Jakiri, killing people in so shooting children in town here. They threw tear gas in my compound twice. And if you ask the administration here, they will tell you how much I've struggled to 
bring the situation under control. But they came fire tear gas in my compound. The first time they fired tear gas in my compound was when I returned from hospital from surgery. And uh, the second, in fact, three times, because the other time they detoned uh, tear gas and flung at my son, who was running to say, my father is not well, don't do this here. They threw tear gas at him and ran. I got out of bed and followed them right to the GMI barracks there. The governor had to come and take me from there back home. Is this how a person should be treated? I come from hospital, I'm in the house recovering. They come through tear gas for me to inhale tear gas. What was my quarrel? If you drove children from the main road and they run down this way, cross through the palm bushes and you see them over there, what is it that provoked you to throw tear gas in my compound? Are you telling me that my compound in this country is a compound that you can be throwing tear gas, grenades and all the like? In 92, the police came, took a camp at Ntarukun Market and were firing grenades, tear gas and all the like into this compound. I remember my dog just delivered and tear gas killed all the puppies. I have uh, grenade wounds on my ceiling. In the last room there where a grenade fell on my roof. You had rigged elections. You stole the victory. What was your need? Shelling my compound. What had that done? So you see a regime that is out to think that we can kill this, we can shoot that, we can... Suppose one of the grenades fell on my head and scattered my head. You will not hear, be here to, talking to me today. You stole the victory. I accept it. Say, in the interest of the Cameroonian people, please move. And when Mr. Bia came here about five years ago, we met. He told the world that that was our first time of meeting. And I told him that, Mr. President, after the presidential elections of 92, I could have gone to war. But if I looked at the population of Cameroon, the human beings, the living people, I said, no, I should not go to war to endanger the lives of these people. I will need them when I become president, as any other president will need them. But when you need them and you don't take care of them, in an issue where they could have told the teachers, okay, I sent my prime minister, and he came discussed with you. You had about eight points, but we discovered up to 19 points. I signed these 19 points, go to school. Lawyers, you've talked about the illegalities and irregularities in your court actions with bailiffs, uh, magistrates not speaking English, and you yourself not understanding the language again very well. Okay, we trans we'll cause some of the transfers, but not all for now, because we'll be training people. Take this, go to work. That was a simple solution. Yes, Mr. Chairman, but we noticed that despite all the efforts that government, uh, political actors, and of course members of the civil society have been putting in to bring the situation under control to quell down this uh, socio-political unrest in the two regions things are rather moving from bad to worse what can possibly explain that as i said again maybe from your vantage position as a journalist has mr Beer ever addressed the anglophones on this issue to say that the Prime Minister came and agreed on this. You people agreed on this. I accept. I sign. You people go back to, uh, to work. Has he ever done that? Has he ever spoken to the Anglophone community? He spoke to the nation, including the Anglophone community, on the 31st of December. And okay, because the Anglophone members. community mean nothing to him. He's addressed the issues of the Boko Haram very well and sent monies for. Uh, People abducted by the Boko Haram to be bought and brought back. But in the Anglophone issue is no, you must do it this way. Go to school if you don't do this and all the like. Start shooting children. Please, it is not fair. We cannot treat the people like that. You, you compound the situation and make it worse. You make the situation worse. Did you expect him to come to Bamenda or to go of to Boya? Of course he's supposed to. He's supposed to. These are his people. He's supposed to go to Boya. These are his people. What are you talking? That Mr. Bia cannot come to Bamenda.
No, I'm asking if you actually expected him to. But speaking to the nation on the 31st of December, uh, he probably claims that this is enough. He's getting to everybody. And then coming down to the northwest, to the southwest. Uh, if you're in a polygamous home, sir, and there are problems in two families, you address the 10 other families, wives that you have. You should call these two and say, look, listen, I've made this address. It affects you. This is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing. Please, can you go back and run your homes the way the homes are supposed to be run so that we have some harmony in the country? As I keep saying repeatedly, how can he face and address Boko Haram and have words and discuss Boko Harams and buy the abducted people back and he cannot talk to the Anglophones? Why should he not? Why should Mr. Bia not talk to the Anglophones? And if you don't talk to me, I'll see, I'll, in my mind, of my heart of hearts, it will be that you don't like me, you don't need me. And when you don't need me, what do I do? You see some children go kicking their feet against stones because my father doesn't like me, I, he doesn't talk to me. He does, please. We are looking at Cameroon as a family. And if we are looking at Cameroon as a family, we want to be treated as such, with love, with understanding, with justice. And Mr. Chairman, do you sincerely think that President Paul Bia coming to the Northwest uh, or going to the Southwest would have changed anything as of what we are seeing so far? Even if he comes now, it might be uh, coming too late. It might be coming too late. Because <clears throat> I had my last son in Sacred Heart. And uh, there are moments you have a pain on his hand. Go to the principal, excuse me, sir, my hand. He'll say, I know you want to see your father. Go to him. When he comes here, I say, oh, my son, sorry. And I touch the fan. I make stretch it. I say, how do you feel? He says, better. I say, go back to school. And he goes back to school. He's had that love, the understanding, and the sympathy of the father. But in this case, Mr. B has made the Anglophones of North and South West look like orphans in a country where they participated with all their hearts to be. But he has sent the Prime Minister to the Northwest on several occasions. He has sent other members of government. Yeah, but excuse occasions. me, unless you are telling me now that the Prime Minister and these members of government that he sends do not tell him the truth. Have they told him the truth? And if they have not told him the truth, I think somebody along the line, he can say, Frundi, come here, what is it? I'll come. And I now tell you why I never came, went for the New Year wishes with him. Because the people are in the bushes crying. They are roasting grandmothers. They are killing children. Children are not going to school. Lawyers are not going to work. You say, please come give New Year wishes to the head of state. Truly, I go shake Mr. Bia's son and look at him in the eyes. Happy New Year, Mr. President. Is the New Year really happy on my part? When behind my house people are dying, being killed, when in my own area gendarmes are being shot to death, all these things, I condemn killing in every aspect of it. He is the one encouraging it. And you and other, other political actors uh, condemning uh, what you call the application of a military solution to a political problem. Right. Uh, should should government be silent when uh, elements of the National Gendarmerie, the military and the police are killed? Who started killing first? Here in my presence, a young boy went, harvested his purple, was washing it at the, the tap in the compound to clean and eat. They came, shot him in the mouth and he died. What crime did that child commit? And even look at the genesis of this. When there was a rampage in the University of Boya, and the gendarmes, the police, members of the armed forces, when dragged sick children out of their beds and robbed them in murky water, raped some of them, I asked my governor here, Mr. Governor, tell me, look at me in the face and tell me, if you heard that, your daughter was raped, how will you feel? You see, take note that what you are doing to me hurts me. 
and be prepared if I can do, if I do that to you. So when they did all these things, raped the children, destroyed their properties, you pushed them to the wall. Excuse me, sir. I saw the pictures that you posted out of children with catapult trying to fight a war with catapult. I mean, it makes you laugh to think that the soldier who's protecting himself from head to toe only leaving space for his eyes will tell you that his fight with AK-47s that one, one bullet will scatter a child, which is what they did. And then they're doing this just because the children said, look, bring our teachers back. Bring the lawyers back. So that we go to school. So that the courts can reopen. You say, no, go to court. Even some of the teachers that tried in those days to go to school, they arrested them in school and took them to Yaoundé. What is the rationale that there's a military court in the Northwest. As soon as we are arresting a person, it goes to Yaoundé. And I want to let you know that some of the people came and gave me confessional statements where they had to spend up to a million francs to be released. So what was happening here and happening in the Southwest is a marketing. It's a marketing where the people are now making money from them, for themselves. And... Uh, the people are being impoverished from the ghost town and all this. They are being impoverished with what they pay to set themselves free. And the nation is being impoverished with the monies that they are spending here on the gendarmes, the soldiers, the police to maintain order. So we are losing money from all angles. And I hold Mr. Bia blame for this. Because if he had stepped in to say, look, listen, the North is the North. Please, Mr. Prime Minister. What are the results of your findings on the field? These are the results. Send them to go to us. I sign, I accept, go to school. I accept lawyers, go to the courts. And then they come up with the secessionist uh, approach and the federal options. You say, no, those are issues to be discussed and debated in parliament. You people going to be working, we'll discuss this, leave it to politicians, we'll discuss it and let you know. I mean, that could have been something. He would stand out clean and clear. But when he just closes his eyes and declaring war, and you tell me that every single angle, I know him very well. And you know him too. That he will tell you that Mr. Bia never declared war. At the airport and Simalem, as he declared the war uh, on the Boko Haram at the airport in Paris, the first question I asked myself was, uh, if I were in his place, what would I do? I said, I'll get home, call my time major. Please, can you brief me on what is happening? And uh, he could have started off with a police operation. Go to the field police and see how you can bring order than to declare a full-fledged war on the people. Helicopters in the air fight, firing from the air, killing children in Boya, killing children here. Hmm? And uh, at one time they sent a, a drone to come film my compound here. I called the governor and told him, I said, Mr. Governor, this thing is getting a little too far. That you send a drone to come film my compound? Mr. Governor, take note. If I see it again, I'll shoot it. Say, oh, Mr. Governor, Chairman, you have a gun so that you'll be shooting. I said, okay, and I know that you sent that drone. If you wanted people to come fill my compound, Mr. Governor, I've never hidden me anything. In fact, I also sat uh, on the grandstand in Yaoundé and my phone was stolen off me. So I said, if, instead of the people stealing a phone, if you wanted information from me, I am a free, open-minded citizen that I will give you the information you need. And my information is in the interest of this country because I want Cameroon to be a good country. No, Mr. Chairman, you you throwing all the blame on the President of the Republic of for w w what you call probably called poor management of the crisis. But what about the main opposition political party in the country? There are some who think that the SDF has not been on the ground, um, has not done enough. 
we saw you in, in, in some few some 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 months back in the northwest in the southwest but after that uh, what next yeah what else were i supposed to do have i an army who sends out an army who gives them the bullets who arms them is it me if in the midst of the firing i was able to go through they stoned my car in this town four times the children and when i met mr Bia in yaoundé i dragged his hand close to me i said please i'm telling you this thing and you are not taking it serious the children that are on the streets are children between the ages from my own estimation as a parent ages 10 and 35 and this is mr Bia, please a very dangerous age being dangerous we have to handle it with care oh no we'll take care of it we'll see what we can do that's what they told me I said, okay i did not end there I went and saw Rene Sadi, took time to talk to him that people are taking these things uh, lightly. It'll go deeper. I took a delegation, went and saw Rene Sadi, we saw Jean Quate, we saw Mbombo Joya, we saw Peter Mafani Musonge, we saw the, the president of the, the Senate, uh, uh, Senator Nyan Jifendi, we saw Mrs. Njoma, I saw the phone of Mankon here, the phone of Bafu, the phone of Bali. I met quite a lot of people because I was worried. I saw it coming. And I saw this thing coming as I, I had started earlier. Several times said that I am seeing dark clouds hanging in the skies of Cameroon. I said it more than five times. And people accuse me that, Fundi, you are talking as if you have something in the offing. I said, I have nothing in the offing. I'm just looking at the way things are moving. I didn't feel comfortable. I listened to what the children are saying. A politician should have his ears on the ground. I went out to try to resolve. I came to Yaoundé, told Mr. Bia. I met members of his government to tell them that, look, listen, please tell Mr. Bia, let us uh, take care of all these issues. He took them lying down. And when you went to Boya, Mr. Chairman, we had some people in the crowd, some young people shouting, that, Mr. Chairman, we've heard this your peace message for so long. It's not working. Okay, I am you happy. Don't want to hear it again. I'm, I'm happy that we heard the young men shouting that. Because what we say is not what Mr. Bia is doing. As you see, I'm bl blaming Mr. Bia. I'm putting everything on him. And I say poor management. And he's Some of them seem to have lost confidence in the chairman. Uh, the chair confidence, confidence in the system. Because they wanted me to declare war. In 92, I told Mr. Bia when we met here that I could have declared war. But I looked at the suffering children of this nation to say that as a politician, you are looking at the interests of the people. You cannot be looking at people's interests and be pushing them again to war. I saw what war did, war, war, what war did in Nigeria in my presence. I've seen wars in other countries, Eritrea, uh, Southern Sudan, even the Congo, yeah. now South Africa, uh, the Biafran, Nigerian, all, I saw all these things. S after seeing them and seeing that I love Cameroonians and I want to build a country on peace, love and justice, I don't think that I'll be declaring war. So it is Mr. Bia. You heard the two students shouting at me. I didn't give up. But when I shouted back, they piped down and listened to me. And I talked. They didn't allow any of my parliamentarians or senators or mayors to talk. They hushed them all down. But when I climbed to talk and they, they tried to push it back at me, I pushed it back at them. And being the person that they loved, we quickly, quickly reconciled ourselves there. And that's why I took it further to Yaoundé to tell Mr. Bia that, look, listen, this situation, you cannot afford to handle it the way you're handling. And if up to then, from thence up to now, he's never spoken to me nor to the people, nor just to say, please, I've listened, I've heard, go, I'm coming. He's never done that. How will you feel? No. The chairman of the Social Democratic Front the SDF, other political parties, the civil society, even international non-governmental organizations, even international organizations like the Commonwealth and others, and even Mr. Bia has been talking about dialogue and so on. Everybody talking about dialogue. But the dialogue seems not to be working. What is hindering the dialogue? Uh, you are asking a very good question to the wrong, from the wrong person. Ask Mr. Bia this question. 
you are supposed to be part of the yeah the, but the have i been invited thing. have i been given a chance all they invite me for is to come uh, happy new year mr chair uh, president uh, uh, at the uh, for may 20th you will come to see, see people march exhibit the the the, the your military power to fight your people not fighting a war so uh, are these the things that uh, peace dialogue should be at i think dialogue is sitting at the table please what is your problem pop, 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 pop. now so person i do this how does it help you okay do it let's see that chance is not given at all at all that chance is not given for dialogue at all at all are you saying that government is preaching one thing and doing the other Precisely that. How? In, in what way? In, by saying that they set up commissions which they don't follow up and we don't have results of those commissions. We have had several missions, government missions to the northwest, to the southwest, even abroad. Fine. Uh, and nothing seems fine, to be coming out fine. of it. <laughs> fine. When the missions came to the northwest, what did they tell Mr. Bia? Are you now telling me that the people that he sends out the common and you don't tell him the truth when they go back? I think if you do not trust your people, you can have a third opinion from somebody else to say, you, this stupid man, come, let me know what is happening. That's never happened at all. So, when the soldiers go, shoot, and kill the people are forced to fight back and i think that mr bia and the cameroon army they are hungry of war that's why they want to show that we can fight we can shoot but you don't war with your own people this is what i'm condemning you don't go to war with your own people the war you should have with your people is a war of words word of words on dialoguing that this is what i want you say no but that's what we all we also want this is what we can do this is what we cannot do it's not a, a war that i mean you have to take a gun that you use my tax money to buy to shoot at my own children and you want me to sit down and clap oh praise to him mr b no it is wrong sir let us call a spade a spade in this country and see how we move forward what do you mean by calling a spade a spade mr chairman if the children tell you that the educational system is lacking, it is for the government to look into. If the lawyers say the legal practices in the courts are lacking, it's the place of the head of state to look into. And not to say, go to work, because if in the Francophonie sector they are doing it in a, in a certain way, and uh, in the Anglophone section, it's a different approach. I think I'm one of those who supported unification with all my heart. Because I thought that Cameroon, they were going to look at the best from the different systems, bring them together for us to stand right at, at the apex. But instead, they tried to smudge everything that the Anglophones brought down to, their, down to ashes. Let us look at the coffee system. The Northwest paid the fees of their children from coffee, Arabica coffee. But they killed, the government killed that, cocoa. Even in the East, Zappi East, the coffee and cocoa that this man was, they just killed that estate. Santa Coffee estate. I mean, what would I say living, back, living outward? Mr. Chairman, we're going to take a short break. Time for us to... Take a look at what the newspapers reported this week. Coming up next, the press review by Innocent Azi. The Star newspaper talks of Mehmet trapped in bullets and fire as security forces try to bring Ambazonian defense forces to bend their knees for killing their colleagues. The Rambler reports of firebombs which have taken leadership in Mehmet Division as Ambazonian Tigers allegedly killed a policeman and a soldier. 
Eden newspaper presents carnage in Meme as villages. Church house burnt down with corpses littering all over the division as a result of clashes between assailants and security forces. It highlights the burning of a 95-year-old woman, spray of bullets in the air, compelling residents in various villages, especially Kwakwa, to flee. The horizon rather paints Mbonge subdivision red as it swims in blood, fear and tears with heavy presence of security forces to hunt Amazonian fighters. The median says Odeshi war in Bonge in Meme division causes Kwakwa village to be deserted, coupled with the fact that soldiers burn down houses and shops. It is equally backed by the Voice newspaper, which says Army shooting spree has emptied Kwakwa village. This to the Post newspaper has led to many flooding Kumba northwest region. In a related story, some newspapers like the Post Weekender reports how the Archbishop Emeritus of Douala, Christian Cardinal Tumi, and Cameroon's Communication Minister Isa Chiruma Bakari have plunged into war of words following the bloodbath in Kwakwa village. The Guardian Post shows Isa Chiruma Bakari cautioning Cardinal Tumi to limit his frequent outings on the Anglophone crisis. In the Voice newspaper, the United States advances dialogue as the way out of the Anglophone crisis. Eden rather talks of U.S. reiterating its recommendation for dialogue on the socio-political impasse. The Guardian Post writes how the president of Equatorial Guinea gives President Paul Bia lessons on how to solve the Anglophone crisis. In another edition of the Guardian Post, Isa Chiruma Bakari says dialogue with Anglophone terrorists can never take place in the history of Cameroon. Another issue newspapers talk about is the 2018 presidential election. Why the Rambler reports on SGF unveiling a special operation to flush out the ruling party CPGM from power? The median asks if Nijon Fundi will hit to calls for single opposition candidates to suppress BR. Eden also questions the possibility of an opposition without history of unity regrouping to boot out BR from office. The Guardian Post tries to answer the question of whether CPGM can win elections in the two English-speaking regions after all the pains inflicted on the population. The Post Weekender directs its own question to Akere Muna, who has vowed to challenge Bia for the throne. If he can equally end up breaking anti-opposition coalition jinx, also, some papers found interest in writing about Nijon Fundi's appetite for the post of chairman of the SDF. The post talks of Nijon Fundi, re-elected Northwest candidate for chairmanship. This is confirmed by Eden, that says SDF militants in the Northwest region have endorsed Nijon Frunzi for national chairman, though searching for a presidential candidate. That is it for the press review in the Insights this week. More news from the papers next Sunday. And that was the press review by Ino Senazi. Mr. Chairman, the government spokesperson and Minister of Communication, Isa Chiruma Bakari, the Minister of Higher Education, Professor Jacques Famendongo, and other government members have said it, have made it very clear that the form of the state is non-negotiable. In other words, the federalism that you're calling for cannot be part of the dialogue. You, you, you're equally calling for, cannot be on the dialogue table. Why can the form of government not be discussed? When the teachers started, when the lawyers started, it was not the form of government that they put on the table. They came up with professional issues that are affecting them in their practice. If the form of government started coming in, federalism, federalism is what the SDF stood for. And uh, quite a lot of my francophone uh, colleagues in politics condemned the federal options that the SDF stood for. But when the young people now came that a secession wanted, 
Now those very people who condemn federation say, no, it's the federation wants, not secession again. Why don't we sit down on a table and discuss honestly from a clean heart? What is wrong? Ah. Federalism seems to be taboo what, to Yaoundé. Can you tell me where Because when, 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 when the ministers and so on, uh, and the other members of government say the form of the state is non-negotiable, it's like me, we sir. can't go back to the federal government, to the but federal system me, of government. Excuse That's what they're saying. Sir. Excuse me, sir. Most of the countries of the world that are progressing are operating under a federal system of government. Right? And... The idea proposed that. Let me give you a little basic understanding of my approach to federalism. Nigeria, in the early days, they had just three federated states, the north, the east, and the west. And from the north, they were producing groundnuts. That is what formed the main capital in Nigeria. When they sell these groundnuts, they gave a chunk to the area where the groundnuts came from and gave some to the other federated states for them to operate. When petrol came, that's the same thing they did. So that you give people's own share of the budget in their areas for them to run. If their schools are not operational as the, the teachers were talking, you organize your educational system if the courts are not moving they can look into and organize but when you say that it's left right left 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 everybody must dance left it is not true sir it's not fair when you tell me that the the ministers are saying it and the minister of education and the minister of uh, communication is what do they know a question is such Shiromas knowledge of what we mean by federation. He marched with us and said he was a federalist. And now when he started condemning federation and said anybody who talks about federation will be imprisoned, I met him in a Twitter and said, Isa Chiroma, I am a federalist. Here I am. Lock me up. He started la laughing. What, what are we talking about? The, well, he's crossed the carpet. So are the, the carpet crossers, are they the people to build this society for us? If you keep crossing carpet from left to right, from uh, Bello onto your own party, from your own party over to Mr. Bia, are these the type of uh, people that we expect them to build this country, the foundation of this country for us? They say a rolling stone gathers no moss. I don't think that he knows what he's doing. No, and the Minister of Education you t talk about, if he stands to condemn federation, if the money that is spent on the computers, they, gave, they went federal and gave the Northwest own. That Northwest is a, a, a state. Southwest is a state. I think that the people could have done something better than what we are seeing. All right, Mr. Chairman, we're not going to talk about computers today, but uh, let, let's talk no, more. No, I, I didn't talk, talk about, about computers. computers. Let, let's talk what more I'm about saying, dialogue. I'll just give you a typical example. Right, Mr. Chairman. Now, um, besides federalism, another issue that seems to be taboo to the regime in power is cessation. Are you in support of the fact that or the idea that cessation and cessationists should also be at the dialogue table? Why did they start calling for cessation? It's because they were not listened to. If from the onset, as I told you, I told Mr. Bia in Yaoundé, please, this thing you are taking it lightly, it will soon slip through our fingers. He listened to them then, to say that, okay, as I told you, I've proposed this, this is about the fifth time I've been talking about this thing. Take your school, this thing that you want, go to school. Take your law, uh, legal things, and go back to, to, to work. I've signed as the head of state. The federal issue, the secessionist issue, we'll talk it in parliament he will have my total backing. But when, instead of you talking to them, trying to look for solutions, you send guns that they should shoot them, kill. 
I condemn it. Now, should Sisiku Ayuk and the other Ambazonian leaders be invited to the dialogue table? Of course, they are Cameroonians. To discuss what cessation? If that's the case, yes. If I'm the head of state, I'll say, but why do you want to secede? You give me your problems. You give me your views. I say, okay, that's what you think. But this is what I'm proposing. Let us look for a midway to meet. For the fact that your child has told you that I'm angry with this, I'm angry with it, it doesn't make that child cease from being your, your son. Right, Mr. Chairman, we will take interviews of the week and we'll be right back in some few minutes. Two weeks ago, in this same village, a Saiyan go there to aggress military gendarme and uh, the other people took their money killed some of them and finally, finally my hierarchy take its responsibility to restore order in this area some of people try to embarrass our our Inhabitant, they go there to aggress them to, like say a sign, go there to aggress them and ask them to collect money for them. I don't want to, I want to call uh, parents, chief and chairman to be really vigilant, to refuse to give money for this asylum because we don't know they will take this money buy gun and bullet to destabilize our peace, our order in our area. There was some misunderstanding. The management of Shanchena has decided to bring back some workers to the headquarters in Guad. But they are Right, we are not well calculated. We have agreed that as from next Monday or Tuesday, those rights will be paid in cash. And I will verify that their rights are paid because they are Cameroonian, they must enjoy the protection of the law the most they deserve their rights. I was shaving actually and then of a sudden we heard noise and I rushed from the from where I was to this to discover the scene as it is. So it is thanks to God that it was at a certain hour when people were still around that this fire has actually been brought up. I cannot explain precisely what actually took place. The exchange, it was a first exchange of our experiences. I can't answer for Cameroon, I can, I, I can answer for Switzerland. So yes. Switzerland can uh, also discover a lot of uh, common points uh, in a deeping way uh, and in knowing also the experience of Cameroon. The experience is to uh, preserve and protect the language minorities and also the representation of the language uh, communities at uh, the federal uh, level and uh, the concept of our work is uh, to share responsibilities at each level of our institutions so we have confederation cantons and communes now I know what we need to do and I am also going to take a lot of things serious and uh, we learn every day, every time we learn. That is uh, the situation now we have like a coach. I think uh, sometimes it's, uh, we're going up after we are done. When you are done, I think it's, it's better now to, to try to do the best to be in the up. Now so we need to continue to work.
those were interviews of the week. Now we take you to a special story prepared by Mini Mifon. The Anglophone crisis is one of the unending socio-political unrest that Cameroon has been faced with for decades. The escalating violence has prompted reactions from the national and international communities, but an end to violence, gunshots, arrests, killings are still far-fetched. One of those prominent figures that added his voice to the prevailing situation is the Archbishop Emeritus of Douala, Christian Cardinal Tumi, who holds that the assimilation of the English-speaking population is the genesis of the crisis. Now the Anglophones have been completely assimilated because we are now, politically, where we were before the reunification, because I've gone back to the Republic with one star. So we are no longer the United Republic. That is, to, you know, a country with uh, an ambition of being, of having two states, federated states. So that's where the problem is. His Eminence Christian Cardinal Tomi, who is rather pessimistic of the immediate return to normalcy, also blames the government for failing to tackle the crisis with seriousness. So. Uh, in my own opinion, it's getting late. And I think at the beginning of things, they didn't take it serious. They didn't think it would be so serious. The people they sent to consult people, that is not dialogue. That is not even the beginning of dialogue, I am convinced. You know. Dialogue would be like the three partite. There were opposition members, government people, civil society. Christian Kadinatomi holds that listening to the people, even those with different political ideologies, is proof of democracy that the government should uphold. They should listen to the other to the English speaking part of the country. What do they really want? How can we reorganize the state so that everybody would feel at home in this state called Cameroon? They want to either you want to get absolute power, that's not democracy. You know, democracy you must listen to the opponent if you want peace in the in the country. And I think every politician should fight for peace in the country where he has he has the ambition to become uh, the ruler tomorrow. The Archbishop added that a solution can never come from the international bodies. I don't blame the international bodies who have all of them called for dialogue. But Cameroon is an independent country, so they cannot force. But I think we are matured enough to sit down and ask ourselves questions. Look at our traditional rulers. Well, they have problems. They don't call anybody from outside. They sit down with the elders to see what is wrong. They do not go out to, uh, to Europe. To, why should we be depending on Europe? I'm against anybody intervening here. It shows that we are children, we are not mature to come together, listen to each other, and propose so that the form of government we want for this country. Outsiders will always have self-interest somewhere. Thursday in Kumbo Central Town, a day after a brutal confrontation between dozens of armed civilians and security forces. Shops are closed and markets empty as though on a ghost town day. Residents explain that the killing of a gendarme officer in the attack Wednesday left locals in panic. Market no stand because we come over here they don't kill gendarme them for some checkpoint for Kishu. So we don't see people come market now order. 
I just go this morning there for my bakery place, the work break. One be around 7.30 or around some 10 minutes to 8. My small brother come here with their tongue say, you don't hear some music, they don't kill two gender. As I the call, some man tell me, say, yes, you don't pass or they see one gender, they lie for it. For me, if you say, for morning time, I hear say to me something to happen for this roof for Kumbu, for that water. I think that the thing will make them the making noise. Only military vehicles transporting soldiers on patrol can be spotted on streets. In the various neighborhoods, doors were closed and a good number of inhabitants had taken off to unknown destinations. Others, however, revealed that they were heading to the farm. Kumbo residents have said that they have never been gripped with fear like now, and the desire of many is the return to normalcy. We don't even know where the people are coming now. We don't know the side where they take Kumbo, and we don't know where they come now. Where they can't kill people, we don't just know. I think today will never happen to our side here. So the thing will get to me. Me, I wear how wear this who are tying a hat before I day for my dog. If you know it's what day now, now now for because I share that that plaza. Mm. Yeah, very happy. The senior divisional officer for Bowie Division, who confirmed the killing of a gendarme officer, stressed on the need for the people to remain vigilant while security forces battle to maintain peace. What we are expecting from the population is collaboration and to tell them that the forces of law and order are there to protect them and their property. Therefore, they should do all their best to give information. They should not be afraid in case they see police, gendarme or army. All the forces of law are here, they have been sent here. It's just for their protection. The incident happened. Uh, we went there with the state council. The investigation is going on. What we are appealing now is just that the Apollo should remain calm and very vigilant. Calm is still to return to Kumbo and other surrounding localities. You welcome back. That was a special story prepared there by Mimi Nefu. Now, Mr. Chairman, are you saying that Sisiku Ayuk and his nine collaborators who have been arrested? and jailed in the Federal Republic of Nigeria should be released and brought to the dialogue table? Of course, yes. Affirmative. No. The Nigerian government says they have violated the Nigerian law by training uh, secessionist fighters on the Nigerian soil. And you're saying that they should be released? Well, I will not want to start doubling in the Nigerian uh, state government's issues but I think that they were arrested in a meeting if they were arrested on the training ground watching the boys march carrying that out their exercises I would say they should take the law and do what they're doing in their country but these are people whose country is at war fighting their people you, if you are out of this country, somewhere else, knowing that your people are going through what they are going through now, it will hurt you. And if you have five, ten of you, you will certainly hold a meeting, what can we do to our people back home? And if such meetings are being held, you are holding such a meeting, they arrest you there. Some even say they were abducted. Okay, so abduction, do we accept that? Was it a mistake? A big mistake, of course. Uh, it seems to be complicating things further on the ground, getting more and more young people uh, radical. It radicalized them. It, ra it radicalized the younger people. And that's why after that arrest, I'm told the activities on the field went further and more soldiers were killed, more youths were killed, and the killing. How, where sh we have to draw a line somewhere and say, stop here and no more. Please, can we see what it is? You see, when we talk of dialoguing, dialoguing, sometimes we talk and forget. 
we had the tripartite dialogue here before. Did Mr. Bia participate in that? He was in Germany, I mean in Switzerland. And uh, Prime Minister Ayatu was the one chairing the dialogue, reporting to him and getting information from him back. When shall Mr. Bia sit down with Cameroonians that he has confidence in them, that are, these are my people, they voted me, let us talk and see which way we are going? No, because of the arrest of the Ambazonian leaders and things getting worse on the ground, the uh, thousands of Cameroonians who have fled their homes in the, the villages in the southwest region, particularly close to the border with the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and they are not seeking refuge in Nigeria. Many are equally seeking refuge in, in the bushes. Well, are you saying that Mr. Bia is not just seeking the refuge in the bushes and all the like, and we know that the bushes are infested by mosquitoes, turtle flies, and other insects that bite them. They don't have the medicines. Uh, pregnant women will be delivering in the bushes. How do they handle the uh, young infants that they deliver in the bushes? So if Mr. Beer were, if I were in his position, I'll put a stop to this and call the forces to come back home and call the Anglophone leadership to come back home. Please, let us meet in Boya and talk. All right, you, you're planning to go to Nigeria with yes. some members of your party to visit the refugees, the Cameroonians right. who are refugees in Nigeria. Yeah, because we feel sorry about I know the situation in Nigeria. I know what some of them are going through in Nigeria. Because I schooled and worked in Nigeria. I have an idea. Nigeria can be very good. But sometimes before they come up to that goodness to take care, the people shall have also suffered. So in the face of a thing like this, is there anything I can do? Can I offer the people under these conditions a glass of water? Can I give them a, a spoon of rice? Can I give them a tablet? Can I? What can I do? It's, it, it is in this desperate move that I think I've called on party officials and anybody of goodwill to let us have some food items like rice, soup, and all the like to take to them. I've told my officials to write to the Nigerian High Commission for us to have cover, to write to the, uh, the Commission of Refugees in Cameroon for us, and to also write to the Minister of Armed Forces that will need protection and cover from here to the borders and let the Nigerian government take over for us to go. I'm told that the people are in different camps so that if by then we get from the Nigerian High Commissioner in Yaoundé and the Consul General in Boya, the number of camps and the approximate number of people in each camp could know how to share the food. We're not saying that Nigerian government and the High Commission for Refugees will not feed the people, but as people who are directly involved, those are Anglophones. I'm an Anglophone. No matter what I become in Cameroon, I will never say that I'm not an Anglophone. I'm an Anglophone. I love all Cameroonians. When the Boko Haram uh, problems are at the peak, the SDF contributed money, about three point something million I gave the, the governor here to send. We contributed money, bought food, beef, and other things, and took took to the soldiers at the military camp in a uh, military uh, hospital in Yaoundé. So, if I did this to this, why should I not do to Anglophones who are in Nigeria as uh, re refugees? I will not say languishing, because I trust the Nigerian government's ability to handle such. No, Mr. Chairman. 2018, the president said it's an electoral year, and the situation is quite critical, as you indicated earlier. And the STF says that it is ready for the at least four elections that will be organized, that are expected to be organized in Cameroon this year. 
how can you be ready in such a context? We say we are ready because we know Mr. Bia will want to fraud. Because the moment we say we are not going in, he will just take everything for himself and will look at you in the face and tell you that I won. I won 100% here, I won 100% there. That will mean nothing to him. Now, let us look at the situation in Cameroon. The far north, North and Adamawa have faced either the Boko Haram struggles or the Coupe de Roots. You have the east. The refugees from Central African Republic are still causing quite a lot of havoc in the east. These are four regions. You have the northwest, southwest that are under the present situation. And Mr. Bia goes to declare that it's an election year. If he told me that, look, this year we are doing everything to bring the upheavals in the country uh, to settle them. He indicated that uh, before the elections... But the things, things are still, still escalating. escalating. Before, before the elections, elections. When, you, when you bring the things to normalcy now, do we bring the Cameroonians whose names are on the electoral register that have escaped to Nigeria to come back home immediately and start voting? Will they have that frame of mind to vote? All right, Mr. Chairman, the Social Democratic Front is ready for elections anyway. But you're going for an election and few months to uh, of at least four elections, few months to those elections, only one person, the President of the Republic, has a mastery of the electoral calendar. And are you ready to go in for this election? And all what you have been decrying, globally referred to as fraud yeah, mechanism, is still in place. You understand and appreciate it that all the electoral manipulations and all that is struggle to juggle, even to bring you a LECAM, to bring you all the uh, institutions that have governed elections, are because of the struggles of the SDF. The SDF carried computers down the streets of Yaoundé, carried transparent ballot boxes down the streets of Cameroon, and we did all this, talking of a level playing field. And when the field is not playing, okay, we are going for elections. I've done this. Okay, we've, let's go and try how that one will be. Today, unfortunately for me, Marafa is in prison now telling you what he did, how he did it, why he did it. Ask Mr. Bia. Now, Mr. President, recently you were elected or chosen as uh, the Northwest Regional uh, candidate. Leader, candidate. Uh, for the uh, upcoming elections during the uh, national convention. And this came like a contradiction to earlier indications that the chairman wanted to hand it over the button of command as far as the presidential election is concerned to somebody else. Well, th thank you. I'm glad you say presidential elections and not the leadership of the party. When that time will come, I mean, you, you journalists are so anxious to know the convention is just next month. Mr. Chairman, are you, go, are, are you going to be the party's presidential candidate? Uh, being voted to be, be the, the chairman of the party. Is it me who voted myself? You heard that impose myself? Please, sir, just hold your peace and uh, by February 21st, 22nd, before we finish on the 23rd, you will know all the presidential candidates or whoever wants to stand and then. Uh, the party will be able to brief you properly on those. Maybe the chairman should tell us if he still has presidential ambitions. It's the people's ambitions, not mine. Mr. Chairman, <laughs> you don't want to tell us if you're going to be the candidate of the SDF in the upcoming election. Excuse me, because the SDF is a democratic party and they choose. We, the, 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 the president does not declare himself. They choose. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to call four names and you tell us what you think about the bearers of those names. Well, if I know something about them, I'll tell you, but if I don't, I'll just tell you that I'm not very used to them. The first is O.C. Joshua. Is a strong member of the SDF? A possible successor of the chairman? Well, the, the, the party will tell. 
He seems to be a spiritual son of the chairman. All are my sons. Honorable Joseph Mann. A strong member of the party. They are strong members, Mr. Chairman. We they know are very strong. strong. We know that all of them are strong members. Yes. And that's why I tell you that the party will now choose from amongst. Jean-Michel Ninche? He's a member of the party. Now, Honorable Weber Joseph. Well, he's a member of the party, but I don't know where he is now. Mr. Chairman, you don't know where your member of parliament is? Should I go around running behind all members of parliament? But where are you? But where are you? Are they the people to report me to say that we are here for me to know? I want to believe that he is in Jacquerie's constituency. If anybody should know where a member of parliament of the Social Democratic Front should be, that can only be the chairman. Uh, well, the member of parliament should let the chairman know his position at every one time. Mr. Chairman, thank you for accepting to be a guest in this edition of The Insight. Well, I want to thank the Equinox Radio and Television for coming to grow, drill me through this hard interview. And uh, I appreciate it because I believe that if you want to know the truth, go where you can find it. Let them tell you and tell them and you show it to the world the way it is. That was John Fundy, chairman of the main opposition political party in the Republic of Cameroon. He was a guest in this edition of The Inside. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for staying with us in this edition of the program. Take the rendezvous for next Sunday for another edition.